Once again, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the VRCL Season 1 Grand Finals. It's come down to this. Players have been battling for the last seven to eight months now to make it here to the Grand Finals for Echo Arena. And we have our Grand Finalists ready to battle it out now. It's going to be Eclipse hailing from North America, going up against our European Regional Finalist, Jax, for the grand prize of 20,000 euros for first place and the honor of being named the first ever global champion for Echo Arena. The rematch we've all been waiting for, number one from North America versus number one from the European Union, fighting it out again a second time. It is double elimination. Can Jax actually come back and take it from Eclipse? Can Eclipse bleed? If it bleeds, they can kill it, but it looks so far that they are undefeated and might remain on top, but it is still anybody's game. They are exhausted. They have been trudging hard. They are been chugging water, making many trips, a couple of dropouts, some uh, breaks here and there, but it's only so much you can do, only so much the mind and the body can recover in that speed of space of time. So it's gonna come down to who really wants it the most and who can keep that energy up. Let's take a quick look at the rosters before we do jump into this grand final matchup. Guys, you're not going to want to miss it. We're going to be starting off with Eclipse, of course, the team that swept through the upper bracket while dropping only one round throughout the course of it. And it wasn't to this team either that they're going up against. Lemming, Palador, and I Shiny representing North America. And moving back over to our second roster now, Jax representing Europe is going to be Slin, Affenterror, and Boop. Oh, yeah, indeed. Tough guys on both teams as what we also call the Jordans of each team. These guys all started out with their team leaders, Lemming, picking the two best players in the game to join him, one of the best players in the game, Affentera doing the same for both of his players. Absolutely. You can see Affentera again there too, being the key player, in my opinion, to keep a look on him. But obviously we have the Slin and Boop combo, which is going to be all the offensive power that we're seeing. We did, however, end up seeing Affentera in that last matchup tend to get a pretty aggressive too. He started to switch out a little bit yeah. uh, with Slin every once in a Very while. Very dangerous so it seems to like do that, but it's, yeah. Yeah, it seems like they're experimenting a little bit more and willing to take those risks. So I'm curious to see if they're going to want to do that again in this type of matchup. Now they're going up against Eclipse, a much stronger opponent than their last, the last team that they faced up against. And what's even worse, too, is like we talked before, they have to be able to preserve their energy throughout the course of this. So I don't know if they're going to want to risk sending Affentera up and having him expel, expel that much more energy to where he can sort of just sit in the midfield, relax a little bit, and save that energy for when he actually has to play goalie. Well, maybe that's why it is they put Slynn in the goal, is so that they can actually mm -hmm. give Slynn an opportunity to rest, trading people off the goal to let them rest and, and manage their energy throughout the match, and hopefully use that to edge out Eclipse's ability to manage their own energy. Well, let's take a look at the brackets one more time as well and see just how both of these teams got here. Obviously, as we said before, Eclipse just completely sweeping through the upper bracket, only losing one single round to the Kangorillas, at least as far as we caught on stream. We're not entirely sure if they dropped one to Team Gravity or not, but Team Gravity ended up going out later on, of course, to the Kangorillas anyway. And then, of course, Kangorillas just fell to Jax as they earn their way back up here to the Grand Finals after being eliminated in the upper bracket finals. They, of course, had to fight past the Lamplighters and the Fangasms to eventually fight against Eclipse in the upper bracket finals fell there 0 to 2, however, and now have to come back in. And if they want to be able to win this, they're going to have to take them down in two separate best of three sets because Eclipse is coming in with the upper bracket advantage. It's time, though, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get into it. Over here on the blue side, it is going to be our European team, and our orange team is going to be represented by North America. It's Eclipse on the orange side, and it is going to be Jax on the blue side. That's right, here comes the final showdown. Aventer is actually playing defensively as they approach the goal. They're not, they're not, they're not getting too crazy as they get started. See if they can pick apart how much energy they have left. Aventer is sitting in the goal. He's gonna have to go up against both Palador and I Shiny. Oh, and another player up on top of him too. Not gonna be able to stop it though. Immediately Lemming slams in a goal and it's Eclipse already ahead, just 30 seconds into the first round. And you can see from Aventer's point of view, he never looked up. He didn't see that Lemming was just hiding on the ceiling, waiting for a chance to attack. It's why he goes up there. It's very hard to remember that somebody might just be chilling out on the ceiling, waiting for an opportunity to shine. Into the second round, of course. Now that the opening joust has already gone by, possession will go over to Jax. They're going to have an easier time picking this back up. And the launch gate, we will more than likely see Affenter holding back as the QB to be able to send a pass over towards Booper Slint. 
Aftenterror picks it up. Ooh, just barely gets that away, too. Look at how quickly Lemmy bounced off of Aftenterror, yep. though, to be able to go into the side tunnel. Some beautiful stuff there to keep the momentum going. And immediately, though, Aftenterror still moving up with Boop. He's playing aggressive now, so it looks like he's willing to take that risk again. Oh, oh almost bounces it the... off the middle diamond to be able to score right there. Very, very close indeed. But it's a very still... hard shot to make and a very hard mm -hmm. shot to block, and he did it. However, Jax still staying in the game right now, still keeping their capability to fight alive here. Oh, another diamond shot almost connecting there too, but Boop's gonna be able to maintain possession. Lemming sticking back up on him though, so he's gonna have to be very careful about that. Aventero sending another pass over to Boop, but Boop doesn't have a clear shot towards one of his teammates or the goal for that matter. Hugging the ground right now to hide his hitbox a little bit here, but Shiny's coming in to try and stop him. Still completed the pass. Over to Aventero, off the oh, back board, but again, another it. miss. Jax is being presented with so many opportunities to score, but right now they can't do it. Possession's been changed though, Lemming's picking it up, and he's heading to the other side. Lemming cannot make these long shots, so he just ditches the disc rather than just hear that ding and let him bring him down. He's given up on trying to do that part of the game, but he can do every other part quite well. We've got it, Palador getting it back under his control. Aventura in the meantime has already transferred himself to back over towards Jax's goal, so they've got a good defense matrix set up over there. Now in the meantime, though, possession changed again. We can see one of the orange players there from Eclipse slapping it down to the ground to make it as difficult as possible for Jax to maintain that possession. And Lemming successfully picks it back up, gets the pass towards Eye Shiny, and he's gonna keep going back and forth with his teammate, although a missed pass sends it into the open, very, very close to the two-point bubble here on the orange side. There's gonna be trouble for Eclipse if they can't maintain that. Looks like they're controlling it still, though. Having to pass it between their teammates, they still got it in their bubble. They definitely want to get it out of here, especially with Slim going around and punching everybody out. I'm not entirely sure what they're doing. They're trying to lure them out of position to get an opportunity to rush the goal, waiting for a cherry picker to sneak down the edge. There's a lot of different moves they could do here, but I, I feel like they're just like, you know, we just got to defend and run down the clock. Two points is enough to win with. Is that what they're going? Or just waiting for them to rush the goal? Yeah, so if if anything the right now... Goal. There it is. That's what they're looking for. If anything right now, Eclipse, as you were mentioning there, was doing a great job of wasting a whole lot of time because we're down past the halfway point of the match here now, and Jax has not been allowed to do anything significant in terms of getting close to a goal here. Like I said, though, they've been presented with opportunities that just haven't been able to capitalize on it just yet because Eclipse has been doing a great job they of running interference. And now they move in, as you said, punch out the goalie. Aventura is taken out of the fight, and that's a free goal for them then. Yes, yes, that is their actual, that is their move. A lot of uh, players love to do that move, punch out the goalie and do it, but no team does it more consistently than Eclipse. They all don't even like to approach the goal if the goalie hasn't been knocked out. However, the EU goalies are fairly good at blocking with their head when they've been knocked out. We just didn't see that this time around. Of course, if you block their, uh, block their view of the disc with your body when the disc is coming through, they might not be able to hit it. Launch coming out from Jax. They're going to launch into the arena here. And again, it's Aventura that's going to be the QB, tossing the pass in. Another quick bounce coming out from Lemming as well to try and keep up with the disc very quickly. Shiny steals it away, sends it back over to the mid to Palador. Palador still trying to maintain control, but he has to send it a little bit further back. Slynn trying his best to keep up with this disc, but he just can't right now. So for the time being, Eclipse is going to maintain control. It will turn into a bit of a scrap. You can see here on the other side of the arena. Right now, Palador and Shiny just continuously tossing it back and forth between the two of them in order to keep possession under the control of the orange team. Eclipse this is, and also, waste as much time as possible. Oh, for sure. And if there's something you watch at that initial joust whenever they come up there, Lemming, he rushes the quarterback in order to force him to make a decision that immediately jumps off his head so that he has what he needs. Oh, and they're moving in again, right back off of the backboard. Sadly, Jax is continuing to play this aggressive strategy. So once again, we see the blue team's goal. Jax's goal is left wide open for the taking. And that's going to be an easy two-pointer for Eclipse to go up to now six to nothing. Blue team, Jax, they've only got a minute and a half to bring this back. And you're going to see that counter strategy. Here's, here's something to actually pay attention to when you see this joust. This how they counter them having joust possession. Lemming forces the quarterback to push it, then he bounces off your head so that he has all the momentum he needs. What the quarterback needs to do is actually slam on the brakes right before he throws the disc so Lemming does not get any momentum. Mm -hmm. it's certainly gonna help to slow him down a little bit and keep him from throwing things away. We do see him moving in the pass goes off there way before this time. Lemming gets the hit. He slammed on the brakes and isn't giving it up. And, and there we go, perfect timing as well because it left the goal open, left them vulnerable and allowed yeah. for Jax to sneak in and get a three pointer. That was the move and he did it. Slammed on his brakes. Lemming held onto his feet and he's like, no, I am going nowhere. You are getting no momentum for me. One of my favorite things to say to him during the beta days, Lemming a grab onto me and he's like, I know you're there. I'm going to stay right here. You're walking. <laughs> Down to a minute and a half, a little bit less than that actually here. And with Jack scoring a three-pointer, if they can do that again, they can immediately tie this game back up. It's going to be coming down to the wire here indeed. But the problem for Jax is that they've now lost possession. Eclipse is going to start with it this time. Let's see how they're getting aggressive. It's the launch. They're sending it themselves across the arena. They didn't get nearly enough speed. They only made it to about the halfway point. Palador maintains control. But here's the thing. Eclipse is going to continue to play passively. They need to try and get at least get it to the other side of the arena here so that if Jax does change the possession up and steals the disc to take it for themselves, 
They're not going to have to worry about a quick goal going against them. They don't have to be aggressive. They just have to keep it tight and make sure they have more points on the board. That's all they got to do is just wait it out. Just keep it on Jack's side of the arena, basically. But Jax is going to do a good job bouncing it back. Way to either side. It will go off the bumper. Looks like Eclipse is using the Where's... other players to get that momentum rather than using each other. Yeah, there we go. Eclipse first to beat them over here towards the disc. They're going to be able to pick this back up. Bit of a fight between one of the more forward players for Jax as well, but the time is getting low. Like we said before, Jax needs to move in, get another three-pointer off. They want to try and take this into a sudden death overtime. And it's looks like it's going to be a passing game unless they have a free shot. Oh, this is not going to be good if they can score it again. That'll no. steal it. And there we go. Palador slamming it into the goal. Eight to three becomes the scoreline. And that may as well secure the first round for Eclipse, unless we can see a miracle coming out from Jax. Oh man, that is the first round, and inauspicious indeed. It does not look good for Jax in this first round. Now, uh, we've often been told this by EU players that Jax usually do not perform well in their first round. So it yeah, might be to be expected, but Eclipse are no scrubs, and this is an example of how tight their play is. And they're playing very conservatively. Jax going to be launching back out again. They have possession, but we've already seen how quickly Lemming is able to move. They stick as a three-man team this yeah, time. And look, Lemming's that. just going to ride on top of them. They go back to the other side. Possession is immediately changed over to Eclipse. Only 15 seconds Ooh. left now. Although we do see a th we do see another two-pointer being brought in there from Jax. He's so fast, so quickly quick, scored. you couldn't even see him. Mm -hmm. Very quickly snuck back in there. Impressive stuff from Jax to keep the pressure on. Problem is, though, again, they don't have possession, yeah, so yeah, Eclipse are seconds. just going to run the clock down at this point. Mm -hmm. and I don't think it's realistic that Jax would be able to take one, get the possession back, and score within 16 seconds. It would be amazing if Jax could pull it off. But let's see. It was an own goal, I'm pretty sure, actually. I think it might have been two. Not entirely sure why you did that. We didn't see, uh, I don't think we saw a name. Oh, I get it. He's like, we can afford to give you this two-pointer because now we'll just yeah. run down the clock because we have possession. Never thought about doing that before. That's a, that's a mind game strat right yeah. there, actually. That's yeah. That's impressive stuff. But at the end of it, Eclipse does take control over round number one. Remember, they've come in from the upper bracket, so they only need to win a singular best of three to be the season one champions. They're one round away from the title. Very clever tactic to actually own goal so that you can retain possession so you can burn the clock knowing that you're not going to give up too many points. <laughs> Definitely. What a move. Oh, man, Interesting way to play, to say the least, yeah. Take a risk like that, but it works out well. Change the possession up and keep them away from the goal. All right, we'll see if Jax can actually turn it around. This is what they like to do. First round is usually just them working it out. Second round is usually when they're able to turn it around. We may not see that here today. I want to see that, but two and out is how Eclipse likes to play, so they may not give up this round. But, wow, man, Ecl uh, Jax, I know they want it as bad as Eclipse. All the trash talking that's happened between these two teams, not being able to have a legitimate zero latency play until today, and they've already lost once, Jax have, and they're back to do it again. Can they win? Can they take it to a second set of matches? The time will tell. We're going to have to see. It's down to the wire here now for Jax. Moving in, they've worked so hard to get to this point. <laughs> they've already guaranteed themselves 10,000 euros prizing in second place. They need to be able to take down Eclipse, though, if they want to be claimed as the champion to be able to steal this title away from them. Going into it, the joust goes out. It's a bit of a messy one. Neither team getting immediate control of it, but Jax gets away from it. Now pushing into Eclipse's side of the arena. They've got a good matrix set up going here, too. And at the moment, Boop's doing a good job oh, of defending himself. Island no! Pass. Banking off Slim the island. Not what they need, but it was Slim. on purpose. Nicely done. Slid moves in saves the day, and on this game, it's going to be Jax that scores first with a 2-0 start. I think you'll like this. The chat had a good one. They said, it's Eclipse decides when you get points. That's why they own gold. <laughs> and I was like, you know what? Oh, man, I kind of believe it. Oh, man. Oh. Affeter, Boop, and Slynn trying to really pull it out. That is a good start for them, considering that almost every round that Eclipse has won, they get the first score off the first joust. So. This is a different move for them. The launch is out. We've got Eclipse moving forward here to start things out. Standard play. Mm -hmm. Sneaking through with Lemming right now. Just having him pass up the pass up the lane. Lemming jumping Slim out of the way. Moving in, trying to get into the way of this one. I shiny picks it up. Back Goal's over open. to his teammate again and swoops it around to score and immediately tie the game back up now at two to all. Oh man, brutal. Look at the possession time too, man. Keeping it fairly even, trying to run it down as fast as they can. Very even across the board, the stats, as we get very early in this game with barely more than 30 seconds off the clock. Still a lot of time to go, as you mentioned there. Yep, just about 20 seconds for each goal there. 
All right, that means the EU team Jax is going to uh, possess it again. Affetera is going to run quarterback. Are they going to triple up on top of each other again? That move did work for a second. Nah, they're going to do standard play. And again, what you can see here, Lemming moving in. He did still get the momentum this time, so he was able to bounce off of that. Oh, man, that was almost an A shot from Jax to get him a three-pointer there. Oh, man, it's bouncing between. There. There. Yeah, the ball got a little glitchy, it looks like. It's like but everybody tried to grab it at once. <laughs> it couldn't decide who got the possession. But it looks like at the end of the day, Eclipse does manage to take it away from themselves here. Lemming's going to take it on a bit of a slow route up field. It's going to give chance Well, they for can't get up to each other. That's what happened is they went man coverage, and they actually kept them from forming up to protect their, their uh, defender. For some reason, Lemming just sort of ditched it, though. I don't know what he was thinking there. Oh, but now Slynn moves in, just punches it away. Yes, he did indeed. Boop and Slynn showing a little bit of disappointment. Knocking him out. He's like, you know what? If we're going to be a punching team, let's be a punching team. A lot of interference being run. Yeah, and if we took a look at the stats from the uh, from the previous round, too, it was it was definitely uh, Jack's oh, actually a little stopping bit more power it. to the table. And yeah, just a straightforward shot there, so pretty easy to block on that one. Affinter pretty much doing his job as he needs to. Slynn's definitely been the big bruiser here so far from... Uh, Slynn's got a free Jax. shot! Oh, come on! No. Slynn, you had all day. That's where the pressure gets to you right there. Slynn missing what could have been a free three-pointer and a nice lead to go up against the Clips. You remember, Jax has to win from this point forward. Yes, they do. With only three minutes left in this round, this is a round that Jax cannot afford to lose. Another shot on goal, and it's wide open, but Jax is continuing to miss it here. What is happening? They're crumbling at this point. Boop Nerves. with possession again. Now they have a goalie in the goal this time to defend it. Slynn coming nope. in on the backside, stolen away by a member of Eclipse, and now cleared back over to the mid-tunnel. Yeah, man, they uh, grabbed it so fast, back and forth. Oh, that double punch on Jax, too. Warming up, Lemming just pushes it out of the way, ducks out of the way immediately in order to retain possession. You can see for Eclipse, still trying to maintain control. They remember, they don't actually have a lead to work off of here just yet, so they are fighting on even odds with Jax, not necessarily trying to waste time. One player from each team getting punched out right there. You see Eye Shiny there. I'm pretty sure the other players are the same thing, but he's wearing his jersey that they uh, that they wore at the regionals. I don't know. I wonder if that's for good luck. He's wearing it underneath his jersey for this one. Lemming moving in, going for the goal, and he sinks it as well. Affenterer not able to stop it this time. Another two-pointer for Eclipse. Now they've got the lead. All they have to do is hold on for another two minutes, 15 seconds, and they'll be the season one champions. Oh, man, that's right. Only two minutes, 15 minutes to go to see if they do sink this round, but it is definitely looking like Eclipse's game. Eclipse as well takes a pretty big advantage now in possession that you saw there for a second. They're over 60% on possession now, which is not what Jax needs. Jax is having trouble maintaining that. They're going to be able to get free possession again at the start of this round. They have to be able to keep it, though. That's the issue, is we constantly see players like Lemming sneak up on the QB or the passing player breaks. and steal it away. Yes, he did get it off this time, so he gets himself into a neutral fight with Lemming, but Palador has already taken it away for once. I don't know if he kept it. No, Boop managed to maintain control. Pointer? Goes nah. for the goal. We did have Slynn right next to it, but the goalie... Didn't get there fast enough. Yeah, goalie was quicker on the trigger, so he was able to maintain control of it and clears it back out. Not to the midfield just yet, but at least further away to where they're not, it's not going to be an immediate danger to them. It's exactly what they needed. All they had to do was hesitate a little bit, wait for Whoa! the shot. There we go. Boop with a shot so quick as well, shooting it in almost 20 meters per second on the speed counter there. Just goes right past the Eclipse goalie. He didn't even see it coming. Nice little slam dunk shot. That's all they got to do is they just need a little bit more. They're, they they appear to be fairly evenly balanced, but it's just a little bit more. Eek a little bit more. Know that you are in the money match. You have got to bring a little bit more. Who can inch a little bit more out of their soul to take the win home? Boop might actually be a little bit upset about that one. I think it was very yeah. close to being on the three-pointer line. So yeah, might have been yeah. expecting that one to be a three-pointer. I think he shot just a little bit too late and ended up registering as a two-pointer instead. Hopefully that doesn't upset him. Oh, man, look at Eye Shiny here. Look, he just gets harassed right now by the two members from Jax. They shoot up. He was the one I think they were going to try to pass it to from the QB as well. So that's actually messed up the plans of Eclipse quite a bit. Minute and a half left in the round, guys, and they're still tied. If it stays this way, it'll go to a sudden Palador's death. Palador's going for the goalie. Oh, no, he's Eye Shiny set up. Moving in, Palador picks it up, and Affentura got pulled out, got baited out of the goal. And that's another two-pointer scored by Eclipse. They take the lead again. <laughs> that looks like that's the play. Either Palador is going to go for the punch, or if he doesn't have the punch, the goalie sees an opportunity to go for a pass because the uh, goalie comes out of the goal. And he's passed it to Palador when he knocks it in. Very solid play from them. So it's either I knock out the goalie, or the goalie comes at you and you pass to me and I knock it in. Either way, the goalie loses. Sadly, not a whole lot Affentera can do. As you said, the goalie always loses in that situation. So yes, he it needs does. to rely on Boop and Slim getting back to the goal quickly enough. They were not able to do that that time. And again, a goal is scored by Eclipse as a result Lemming's of that. not rushing the quarterback this time. 
He's gonna hold back. I think he's realized that he's that the counter has been found for him. So you can see he hangs out of the middle island instead. He's gonna try to stop Affentero from getting the pass. Because Affentero was actually allowed to go all the way to mid. Oh! Whoa, is this coming from <laughs> a three-pointer again out of nowhere from Boop? It's the same player that scored it last time. They keep shows forgetting up, he can shoot that. Shows up with a three-pointer out of absolutely nowhere. And now it's Jax with the lead. No longer is it a trade back and forth on two-pointers. Jax is gonna mix things up a bit. You can't leave your goal that open when they're past half court because both both Boop and Slen can make those half court shots. All right, we're actually switching possession back over to Eclipse this time. Palador should be the quarterback. Yes, he is. Standard fair play. Let's see, he's find some time. He's taking a page out of Affentera's book there. Actually, he's pretty close to the middle before going for the pass there. So a bit risky, but it works out. They've got the Let's Huddle under control right now. And just volleying it back and forth. Shani missed the pass, though, so it is going to go into the open. Here's a chance for Jackson to steal it away and start trying to work it into their favor. 50 seconds remaining here. Eclipse scoring a goal will give them their lead back. But Jax is definitely probably going to want to turn on the goal. Oh, so close. Just a little right, bit up going to do it, right. though. Watch him do it. He'll move in. You can see as well, Lemming's actually going for it. I shiny back fair, there with is. Paladrone. And again, Aventura has zero support, so it's yeah. another two-pointer coming out from Eclipse. It's that same attack where two of them go in. Palador goes for support. You're either going to pass it to him or he's going to knock out the goalie. If you go 2v1 with Eclipse against your goalie, your goalie's probably going to lose. 38 seconds now for Jax to try and score another goal. It is at the point, though, because they picked up that three-pointer last. They only need a two-pointer to be able to take the lead at this point. I feel like Palador is the linchpin for that play. So they're too busy focusing on Lemming and Shiny. But when they get that close, one of the team members needs to peel off and just shut down Palador. The push coming out here now. Again, it is going to be Affentera that acts as the QB. Lemming actually missed his launch. It is way up. behind <laughs> Affentera right now. They just have to hope, however, that possession doesn't randomly switch here. Nope some circumstances. Oh, we can see the possibility for that. Palador moving in, Slynn trying to steal away, but no, it's gotten away too quickly. However, Affentera is out of the goal now, playing aggressively. It's come down to this. 15 seconds remaining. Jax needs to score focused. right now, or Eclipse will be the VRCL Season 1 oh, champions, and they get it in, it is. scoring it off the backboard. A great pass over towards Slynn, and he sinks it in. 9 to 8. Are you not entertained? Look at them staying in this fight. Eclipse now with only 10 seconds to try and score back. Eclipse Otherwise, do it in 10 seconds though. Let's see their crazy Hail Mary on this one. If not, it's going to get reset and we'll go to a round three. I am hyped. I'd like to see them not have a two and out for once. Or at least in recent memory. <laughs> Launch coming out in three seconds. Let's see if Eclipse is something special to show us here. They're going to shoot forward again. It's Palador that picks it up. A quick pass down the tunnel to I Shiny, but the pass misses. Less than five seconds here now. They need to set this up quickly. Over to a teammate. There's a goalie ready for it. Affentera won't have to deal with it. And Jax takes control of round number two. They stay alive. They stay in the game and cause Eclipse to lose only their second round in this entire tournament so far. Well, it goes back to what we were saying and what we've been told. Jax, not so good in the first round, but the second round, they can dial it up. And if they can hold on to it for the third round and actually take it down, then that would push them into another set of matches. And if another set of matches without a, uh, without a break might actually turn itself over to Jax. Actually, for once, watching Eclipse be exhausted and on the ropes might work out for them. But still, they have to win one more round. And you see how hard both these top teams from the EU and North America fighting it out with each other is going to be. Jax have found the weakness for Eclipse here now, though. They know exactly what they need to do to be able to win this. They found winning combos. They found the ability to multiple times. Now, Boop was able to sneak in. It's that left side on their portion of the arena that's often very ill defined. Ended. Yeah. There was two times in a row he was able to sneak in. Was kind of was kind of robbed one time because he did end up trying to go for the three pointer, ended up being a two pointer. But the second time sneaks out that three pointer, and that is what ended up allowing for Jax to take that one point edge at the end of this last round. Here we're going into it now, though. It's round number three. This one still could potentially decide it all if Eclipse should take it. So Jax are not out of the hot water just yet. Can Jax give us a repeat of that winning strategy? Because there's one thing I've not seen, it's Eclipse actually breaking down someone else's strategy. They're used to having a playbook that is hard to defeat, and if you defeat one of them, they just switch plays. But I've not seen them actually have to deal with defending and coming up with new plays. They've got a free shot on the goal, though. Oh, no, and Affentera hasn't had the best record so far. He's going to move back in. He does manage to at least get it down to the floor. Get some assistance now coming in from Boop and Slynn, too. So that will really allow them to clear it. The problem is that they don't have anyone on the upper field. Slynn is only just now arriving here. Eyes Shiny, along with Palador, are going to be able to pick it back up. But we see Boop moving in. At least gets it free into the open. Palador still moves in. He's going to be able to pick it back up. Sending it back to a teammate, though. They're not going to want to go for the goal so quickly just yet. Yes, and Slynn gets knocked out, but he actually started to jump in front of Shiny. Gives him some punch of his own. Ooh. Double stun. The goal is open, but they're on it. They can clear it. Jax 
He's going to send it back. Ice shot. But Palador should be there. He is not there. Oh, it's so Boopin the in the back three. here right now. Look, look, look. We got a slingshot coming back in here now, too, with Boop and Slim. They're going to work together. And now the counter slingshot comes no, out from the clips. Out. They get back into the defensive positions. They're able to successfully defend this. Lemming now has possession of the disc, and he's going to start working his way back over towards Jack's territory. He avoided Affentera coming in for the takedown as his full midfielder. Lemming actually felt that he was there and just turned around on the dime. <laughs> Palador just swinging it around like it's a yeah, maze. Not, not sure what was going on there. It's like, it is not a weapon. Shiny doing the same. In fact, he almost banks it off the diamond. Just a little bit off the mark, though. The diamonds have been so cruel to both teams here today. Clear it, clear it. And Palador misses the clear. He was there in position, but instead it's down there. And he ends up going the wrong way. No, he doesn't go the wrong way. He actually goes to pick up some steam so he can actually recover it, whoa, get in whoa, goal. Whoa. What's going on Disc here? Oh, oh come it's on. a ding. Not what we needed to see here at this point in time. Keep in mind, again, this is still the original volley at the start of the round. No one has scored yet, and we're over a minute and a half into the round now. Aventera, Slynn, and Boop looking for an advantage. Aventera is still trying to find his capability Ooh, to pass his to teammate. Fight Over to Slynn. So Slynn's alone, one. though. He's in a 1v2. Down and yeah. it's timid, and it's a slam dunk coming up from Boop. Beautiful pass by Slynn. He gets the assist. Boop gets the goal, though, and it's Jax that start off with the lead. Woo! Man, look at that volley. That is a very long one between two of the toppest teams in the world fighting it out for revenge for Jax. If they can take them down, can they actually win this round? Oh, it is exciting, but still, that was the first volley, and now Eclipse has starting possession. Although we did see in one of the earlier matches that Jax was able to stop them from progressing, even though they had early possession of the disc. And let's see if they can do that again. Out comes the push from Eclipse here now. They're going to be able to send a quick pass over to the left tunnel. That's it's gonna be a possession over to Lemming. Lemming doesn't necessarily have an easy time though. He ends up banking it back towards Palador because there's immediate resistance from Jackson that tunnel. Yes, that's right. Palador's working his way forward. Everybody's pulling into a defensive position. But you don't want to allow them to stack up on your goal. Letting a clip stack up on your goal is bad, so clearing it is definitely important. Slynn sending it back. That's a wide <laughs> push. Ooh, thankfully, we can see the slingshot from Eclipse. Lives way ahead of time, though. Jax not able to react to that quickly enough. In fact, they only sent Boop to the upfield because they know it's going to be coming back more than likely unless Boop can pull up a miracle there. So Palador takes it. We do see Boop staying behind for a little bit of a fight against Lemming, but it's good because Lemming's their star player. If they can distract him, that's going to be a less of a chance that we'll see a goal scored by Eclipse. Eye shiny moving shot. in. Affentera hasn't had the best record. No, swinging it around. Look at it up. Yes. Bumping it away, and all three of the players from Jax now under control of it. They send it back up to the middle. Field. They're not out of the clear just yet, though. There's still members of Eclipse trying to maintain control of the disc. I Shiny did not like, didn't stop like that. That was very, very hard fought. But 1v1, Aventera can stop you. Ooh, almost oh, another diamond come on. shot, too. We're getting so close to seeing these diamond shots connect. Doesn't matter, though. Gotta hesitate just a little bit, guys. Give it a little bit of time to Jax, take that shot out. Jax at least have the ability to relax a little bit here because of the fact that they have that lead. It's not a big one, but at least they can work off of that for the time being. We've got Lemming trying to move through the mid tunnel, but nope. it's stolen away by Affentera. He's taking a risk, though. Remember, this is what caused the loss for Jax back in the first round was the fact that they kept pulling Affentera out of goal, and it can constantly was left open. Also accounting for that, Boop and Slynn had such a hard time getting back there, too. But right now, they're keeping the pressure on as long as they keep it this way. Oh. It'll work out. No, nicely done from Lemming. He smacks it out of the way, keeps it in the open for the time being. Jax is still looking for that opportunity to score a goal, but they haven't Aventura's been able to do it. Aventura's gonna yet. line it up. Aventura, can he get it though? There's a lot of defense yeah. there. Yes, Aventura slams it from just inside of the two point line. Very, very close up to it, but it's a second goal from Jax. Can you feel the energy that Jax must be feeling right now, getting this close to getting this vengeance, getting this match out on Eclipse? If you just imagine you are them right now, they are hyped and full of energy. Eclipse probably not too scared, but feeling it a little bit, and you may start to see their ability to play Wayne, because for the first time, they are slightly on the ropes. We've only got a minute 26 to go, but four points to zero right now. Might be Eclipse's first loss of the game, might be their first shutout. This would be their first series loss of the entire tournament and their first series loss in quite a while, right? If we're going by the online results as well, we really haven't seen one of those in the past before. But let's see, this is not done just yet. Minute and 15 is still a chance for Eclipse to sneak in here and get a couple more goals off to allow them to take this game away. Jax are oh, not Aventura done gets fighting out. The disc yet. is open. Oh no, this is going to go way back downfield here. Is it going to be enough to go right into the goal? Oh. And yes, it will. A long range goal, 33 meters away. Ashani with the clutch three-pointer from half court. They ran all the way downfield. They got there in time. They could have stopped it, but they just could not get their hands on it. Who knew iShiny can make that kind of shot? Here's the question now for Jax. Do they switch to a defensive play style to avoid that happening again, or do they keep the aggression going to try and open the gap it's a bit It's working more? for them. That was a mistake and a lucky shot. I mean, iShiny's not known for making half-court shots, or they've been keeping that a secret. <laughs> 
But let's see here. The launch coming back out. Jax, at the very least, is going to get possession this time around here. Hold on to They it. want to try, yeah. They want to try and waste time. This is going to be their best bet at it. They do have to at least stay a bit aggressive, though, and try to force it to the other side of the map. But actually, for a second there, Eclipse had an open Slin getting knocked out there just when he would have had a chance to score the goal. But now he's back in the fight. However, they both commit to the Ooh. same position. Almost swinging it back around. We almost he's had open, he's open. Slin going there in. It is. He scores another two pointer. And just like that, Jax are back in a comfortable position. 45 seconds to go. Possession will switch over to Eclipse. It looks, it's looking good for Jax. I've got hope, I've got hope. But man, Eclipse is, this will be the first time that they will have been defeated. And if it bleeds, they can kill it. Absolutely. We've mentioned this before. Eclipse have almost never dropped the single best of three series in their tournament performances before. So this would be a massive achievement alone from Jax. But we also have to mention once again that because Eclipse is coming in from the upper bracket, this will not end the tournament just yet. We'll have to reset it and go all over again in order to decide the true champion of the tournament. Let's get into it though. What Here could comes be a strong the play. very last volley Lining of the tournament? Pointer. Moving in. He's going to juke on the ceiling. Get ready. Get that, they might be able to tie it back up. Shiny gonna go for it, fair. tries to go oh, for it. It's not oh, a three-pointer though. The it's three -pointer not a three-pointer. <laughs> <laughs> they were trying to go for the three-pointer, but his hand just crossed and let go too early. So, Jax still holds the lead by one singular point. Same as the last one. Jax was able to score a two-pointer to open that gap a little bit more, and it's a good thing they did, as if not, Eclipse would have just taken the lead right there and been able to switch to a defensive play style. Now both teams have to stay on the aggressive. Jax, mainly because it's the only thing that's been working for them. Their defense is not a match for Eclipse's offense. They have to fight them with their own offense in order to stay in this match and give them a chance to win this round and reset the series. Jax has possession. Get ready to ditch it and hit your brakes. Do not give up any momentum. That is how you hold on to it for another 20 seconds. But keep in mind, uh, Shiny's already shown you he can hit it once. Lemming just tossing it between hand to hand. Almost going a little crazy town over there. Oh, on. it's open. Palador is going to get it. They don't no, toss it up to Shiny for the three-pointer. We do have Aventer sitting in the goal at least. They're trying to distract him. It's being bounced around. Three seconds remaining here. Eclipse need to score right now if they want to be having a chance. This no, one gets intercepted. And with that, Jax are going to take control of the original best of three. And with that, the series will reset. Eclipse will not win it here yet. Can Neither you will believe Jax. it? Talk about vengeance. At the very least, now they both have a one, a win between each other. Now Eclipse knows, hey, we can be beaten. But they will have to be beaten again, as you all know. See if their energy holds out after that exhaustion. I say, don't even let them rest. Let's put them in and see whose endurance holds up. I think for their sake, though, we are probably going to give them at least a couple of minutes yeah, here yeah, to sit back, just relax, little. enjoy themselves. It's Jack's case, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I bet they got to be happy. You know the rest of the EU team sitting on the sidelines are there. They're all the whole like, <laughs> And of course, now only one more best of three separates Jax between ultimate victory and being able to steal this title away and be crowned as the first global champions for this game. Wouldn't be the first time we saw somebody uh, work their way all the way to the winner's bracket, get knocked to the loser's bracket just to come back. We've seen it a few times. Does not mean it'll happen here, but we have seen it, so it is possible. And right now, with the momentum that they're getting, they did win those last two rounds in a row. The first round was the one they gave up, then two rounds, so that gives them the match. So they do currently have momentum on their side. However, Eclipse are not letting up. This, that three-pointer from Shiny. who knew he could shoot that far? This is, this is where it actually, because I don't, Again, we don't know exactly how uh, the admins are going to handle in between the series if we're going to give them a break or not. But it, honestly, if you're Jax right now, you probably want to go right back in. You oh, yes, keep of, this course, fight going of course. Because you have the momentum. Uh, it's a very similar concept. Well, Eclipse never has to deal with being uh, yeah. exhausted. Mm -hmm. It's a very similar concept actually coming in from Counter-Strike, and we see this a lot too, where players will purposefully take pauses when a team has the momentum going in their favor to break that yeah, momentum. To ice them, yeah. yeah. So if, as far as Jax is concerned, they probably want to get back in as quickly Be as hot. possible to keep that momentum going. They got the heat, they got the hype, the other team is exhausted, keep the pressure. It's like no huddle in football. You just keep pressing forward and let the other guys just crumble. Right, guys, well, we are going to take a break to give the players a moment to chill out in between the series, so do stick with us. We'll be back in just a couple of minutes with what is going to be the final set of this season of the VRCL for Echo Arena.
Everybody thought it was going to be a sweep from Eclipse, but that's certainly not the case. Jax, while falling in round one, they bring the heat in rounds number two and three, and they successfully are able to upset them in the first best of three. However, because of the fact that we did see Eclipse coming in from the upper bracket, the tournament is not done just yet. We have another best of three between these two teams, and regardless of who wins this one, they will be the season one VRCL champions.
Yeah, man, here we go again. One more set of rounds. Can Jack stay on top? Can Eclipse recover? Who will be crowned the number one in the world? I cannot wait to see who it is. These are all players that I love, and I have things that I love about them, but, ooh, man, that is really getting excited. Who doesn't love the unexpected? Who doesn't love a comeback story? I know I do, and watching people fight their way back to the loser's bracket is one of my favorite things to Especially watch. Especially when you consider the way that we did end up seeing Jax go down back in yep. the upper bracket finals. Coming into this one, I'm going to be honest with you, I personally thought this was going to be a quick 2-0 yeah. sweep from Eclipse, end it nice and quick, and we'd all go home. But that was not the case at all. They brought new strategies, they brought everything they needed, and we're getting into this one, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, it's already well into it as well, as <laughs> Eclipse is actually up 2-0 already. We missed the beginning. It's almost as though it happened in the future, and now we finally are seeing the aftermath of it. Well, let's see. Already I saw uh, them ready to rock and roll. They're excited, looking at them moving around. They're ready to get that counterattack. Minute and a half scored oh, away already as well here, too. So let's see exactly how Jax is going to be able to come back for this one. As they did lose the initial volley, moving on to the second one here now. Slynn trying to go back and score this. Oh, almost banks the shot off as well, but he gets punched out. However, he can get back possession, Ooh, trying to throw it in. So it's just close. barely saved by Palador there. And wow, Lemming as well, trying to hold on to this. We can see the disc is going crazy as these players using their hand movements to try and keep it in the open, try and make themselves unpredictable, and it's working out brilliantly. Jax still trying desperately to get this back under their control. However, at the same time, Eclipse hasn't been able to clear it just yet either. That that's going to change now, though. Palador takes it. Ah, no. Sends it back downfield. Here we go. Finally get access to a mid-tunnel. We'll see if Slim can maybe steal it away real quick. Yeah, Slim gets the punch off. We do have Palador ready to pick it right back up again. Oh, yes. That server doing its extrapolation. It's one of the things that it does in order to keep everything smooth. But they're moving so fast that the extrapolation is having trouble keeping up. And they're not used to having to deal with people who move this fast. Both teams doing that that uh, juggling, that dribbling between their two hands in order to make it hard to grab it from them. And it's being exacerbated by the way extrapolation works. And still, Boop there is we able go. To nail out it of nowhere, it's Boop again doing this. He's done it so many times throughout the series. And now he's done it once again at the start of the secondary series. He moves in, scores a three pointer out of absolutely nowhere. He's often referred to as Europe's Lemming. But if they win, then Lemming will have to be known as North America's Boop, indeed. It's a fight that they have in the chat rooms in Discord. And at this point, it will. will it will add way more um, credibility to that argument. Let's see here now. The launch coming out in a moment here for the guys on Eclipse. They will have possession going into their favor this time. Only a matter of getting that pressure down the field. Picked up by Palador. Should be able to send it back over to Lemming here in a moment. He's going to be waiting until these guys get very close to him. Giving himself a moment. And there we go. Baited it perfectly. However, Jack's using the slingshot just as quickly to get back into defensive position and try to clear this away. Yes, Aventura actually recovering it. Kicking over to Boop. Look, Boop looking for an opening. See, Slim they picking catch this him up. with an open goal, but no one's down to take yeah. it. He must have gotten knocked out. We do see a few more players trying to move in now to secure this. However, it's not going to be left into the open here. Slim still with control of Rip Boop as well. Scores the again. It's only going to be a two-pointer this time. Actually, no, it was that another three-pointer? That's what it no, looks it wasn't, like. Yeah, it was another three-pointer. Excuse me. Another three-pointer scored by Boop. He is showing up and is showing up as a massive MVP for Jax to save them in this series and potentially steal the championship away from Eclipse. Yes, man. This is a new one for Eclipse, having to play exhausted, having to play with their backs on the wall, having to play against a team that is not only the number one in the EU, but is also very hyped off their first win against Eclipse. Maybe this will be the one that moves in their favor, but Eclipse does have possession to begin. It's the launch. They move themselves back out here now. Lemming still holding on to control of it, not going to be passing it away so easily just yet. Goes instead back over there towards Palador. He's going to be able to pick it up instead, throwing it towards the upfield. We've got Slynn trying to move in and interfere with this one. Does he get it off? No, sadly not. It goes over to Eye Shiny instead, who's been very, very quiet throughout the course of this series so far. Except for that three-pointer. <laughs> yeah. Now he's going to move forward here, and as he goes in, Affentera looking to defend. Now remember, Affentera hasn't had the best of luck so far in trying to hold on to this goal, and oh. once again falls down here in an attempt to defend himself. He gets knocked out, and it's going to be another two-pointer scored by Eclipse. Yes, it is. And look at the stun disparity between the two of them. They are a heavy stunning team. This is what the Europeans say about the North Americans. They say North Americans like to punch and Europeans like to pass. I say it's violence versus teamwork. Which one is going to work? However, the goals from Jax have been far more effective. They've both been three-pointers. While, while there have been only two-pointers from the side of Eclipse just yet. Jax getting ready to launch back out. And now they will have possession as well. So let's see what they can do with this advantage. Don't give up that heat. Ooh. 
Almost losing the disc right there too. Forgot Lemming to hit those in. brakes when Lemming came at him. Yeah. Lemming coming in at lightning speed there. Eclipse is going to be under pressure. They successfully get the disc over here towards the Eclipse side of the arena. Sven doesn't have a ride to get back. Palador still trying to maintain possession. Two players from Eclipse actually getting punched back out there. Slynn can maintain it. However, Lemming the is going to pick it up instead. The way that they're all playing, it appears that uh, the extrapolation issue that we're having, I think it's only for our client side, uh, what we have for a spectator. The other users don't seem to be having an issue with it as they stat snatch it from each other. So in-game, they're actually seeing a different picture than what we're seeing. So don't worry about that if you're sitting there watching at us at home. And of course, Palador moving up with iShiny right now. They're going to have to try and get past Affin Terror once again. Moving it right up towards him to slam it inside of the goal. And they once again go right past Affin Terror. It's another two-pointer. The third goal this time in the round for Eclipse. And there's only 42 seconds for Jax to respond with one of their own. Yes, they are definitely tied up. And the Jacks will get possession again. They'll have an opportunity to rush the goal. But right now, their momentum has been broken. They started really strong with two back-to-back -back three pointers. But right now, Eclipse has turned it around. And that's the last thing you want is for Eclipse to start gaining momentum on you. So let's see here. The launch about to come out again. Like we said before, Jacks, they are going to have themselves discontrol at the very least to play off of here. So over to the side tunnel to start things off. Gives it to gives the possession over towards Slynn. Slynn having to go past another member of Eclipse. Successfully do it. Get themselves inside of the bubble here. Over towards Eclipse's side of the arena. They can't keep it there, though. They're fighting it out. They're duking it out. They're holding on to it. Boops team's got an opportunity seconds. to do it. That's right. I said Boops team. If he can get us another three-pointer. Boop has been the savior so far. The only one to be able to score any goals. Oh, that is going to cost him. Where is he at? He needed to take that and score the goal. That might end up taking this into OT as a result of that as we're still tied up at 6-6. Six to six. They might Slim be able to recovers. make one more run at it. Nope. Flynn, no, getting punched back out there. And with the disc flying to the other side, the timer is going to expire. And that means we go to overtime for round number one of the repeated series. Yep, and overtime unfortunately does favor Eclipse as far uh, as far as it concerns Jax. Eclipse does have the fastest joust in the game, and we don't see them get beat very often. Other people claim that they have a faster joust, but we have not seen evidence of that yet. Especially whenever they when Eclipse decides to pull out their nuclear option of five man launches. There we go, big launch coming back out here. Possession this time there is going to be is. in the middle, and it's picked up by Eclipse. Lemming specifically is able to take control of it, and we do see Palador getting it as well. Where exactly are we going to see the disc end up swinging towards here? My shiny trying to swoop it in. Not going to happen just yet. The disc continues to fly. Slynn trying to intercept it here, but he cannot get it away from the Eclipse players. That's dangerous now. Remember here in overtime, the next goal, regardless of how quickly it happens, will win. They've got the chance to do it there right it here. Is. And indeed, Eclipse will slam dunk it. It's Lemming that scores it. And Eclipse will take round one again in the second series. Round one gaining momentum, putting themselves in a much harder lead giving themselves what they need to actually break the momentum that Jax was getting. Can Jax get hyped again? Can they push themselves in the lead? They started off with two three-pointers so strong, and then all of a sudden, it came crumbling down. So we should be able again, guys, to reset this and pretty quickly jump back into a second round. So don't go anywhere. It's only going to be a matter of a couple seconds. And of course, we're going to restart that spectator client really quickly, too, to fix that up. Fix that interp issue so that we uh, don't have a flying disc the entire time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would definitely be useful. It's entirely possible that they're cramming so much stuff down the network that it's just having trouble getting it to us. Yeah. We don't get a ping rating for the uh, spectator client, so you never really know. But generally, um, it usually works quite well. This is the first time I've seen that before. But we have a lot of firsts. This is the first time we saw Eclipse actually lose a match. So, yeah. a lot of firsts today here at the VR Challenger League World Grand Finals. And Eclipse could very well lose this series too, but they got off to a good start here. It's good recovery and a good momentum breaker as well because Jacks were looking like hot stuff coming into the second oh. series. Three pointers back to back. Mm -hmm. Boop just really showing them what it's done, but that last three pointer could not see That's the, the deal. problem though, is that we were only seeing that from Boop. Where were the other two players? Affinteris sadly is still having issues with the goal. Granted, that's not entirely entirely his fault. There's also problems with both Boop and Slynn not being able to get back to the goal and assist him in time. But even in the more even 1v1s that Affentera is going up against, he has not had the best track record in the series so far. Maybe they're just uh, letting the other team get used to not seeing Slynn so they could come back and win it again. I mean, it is something that we know about Jax. Maybe it's just fresh off of the rest. But they say the first round with Jax is usually not good. And maybe we'll see a repeat of last time. They give up one to Eclipse, and then they end up winning the two. We don't know, but that is, that's what's been their standard fare throughout the VR Challenger League offline I and mean, online stuff that's been happening on the internet whenever people just play each other weekly after week. And that's what they tell me that they do. And that's what we've seen them do at the very least in that last set of rounds. So maybe we'll see it again. It's been a trend for them. So it's still possible. 
Absolutely. It's still very, very possible for either team to take this one, but it does put the guys from Jax up against the rope for a second for time sure. now. They yeah. lost the first round in the first series, managed to bring it back with a reverse sweep, winning the next two. Now they're gonna do the same exact thing again, and this time they'll earn the first place trophy along with the prize pool and the title if they can do it. Oh man, if they can indeed. It's entirely possible that we'll see Eclipse win another one and go back to their two and out uh, flavor. It's also possible that Jax could win it and turn it all around. It's anybody's game. Everybody is excited. People who are going one side are going the other side. The chat is losing their mind. Everybody's chanting for their home team. They're like, oh, EU, go, USA. Everybody is, is ready to see what happens with this first season world champion. And we are also excited to see what happens between these two. We don't know exactly which way it's going to go. We have some ideas, but we don't believe in any of them. Exactly. There's a lot on the line for both of these teams as well. To be the first world champion for the game is certainly going to be a big prize to take home in itself, not accounting the money or anything else that's up for grabs here. And both teams have been playing their hearts out. We've seen incredible stuff from both sides of the table so far in this matchup. We need to see a little bit better defense coming out here from the guys on Jax. That's their I, biggest weakness so far. I feel like, if anything, though, after all this, even if Eclipse ends up winning or even if Jax ends up winning, I feel like the trash talk has to come down a little bit. Just like, hey, you know what? I respect you, because that was really hard. <laughs> It's oh, turned man. into a very, very intense match indeed. But like I said, Jax has a blaring issue when it comes to their defense, and they need to patch that up. They've been able to make up for it when we go back to the last series just by pure aggression. They basically, you know, the best defense is a good offense. They took that advice to heart, and it worked out well for them in uh, rounds two and three and back in the first side, series. So weak for Eclipse. Yeah, yeah, keep yeah. Just charging. That's what Boop went. He went up that side too as well. I mean, Slim did it before, but then Boop went just went three-pointer, three-pointer. You guys got to protect your side. They're not... I think it's a good move for them to stick with it. Absolutely. That, that or Eclipse has figured it out, I'm not sure. It's, it's, yeah, like I said, we need to see like Slynn getting into the game a little bit more here, because he had a couple chances to score there too. There was one big pass in general that comes to mind there that got thrown right to him, missed the heart it. breaks for every one of yeah. those shots that he missed. I'm like, come on, Slynn, y'all had the advantage. You're a great shooter, but I've seen him do that before. When he gets too excited and he has a really hard team on his back just attacking him, then he'll start to miss shots. It just happens. But you just gotta calm, take a breath, and then move forward. Give yourself a little hesitation. As far as Eclipse is concerned, though, yeah, it's that left side of their arena. They just constantly let Boop sneak up on them from there and score those three-pointers. That needs to stop. It actually didn't even become just an issue with the left side. It became an issue with just Boop in general being allowed to sneak past them. <laughs> so it's just a, a sneaky it's, guy. It's just kind of an awareness issue, it seems like, that he constantly is able to either hug the ceiling or kind of sneak in from the floors or something like that, get into a good position, just gets himself a nice pass, and then he just scores out of absolutely nowhere time oh, and time again. It's fantastic to watch them all play. Because these guys are not only just the top teams in both their respective leagues, but they're also widely considered the top players collectively in their leagues. This is one of the reasons why they're the top uh, team in their leagues. So it's really fun to watch these guys play at this level, so much so that it becomes difficult for us to even watch it in spectator. They're running so fast that it's hard to even track the disc and what it is that they're doing, which is just uh, hilarious to watch these guys. Introducing a new mechanic that a lot of us did not see. I think I only saw Eclipse really doing the dribbling. Some people do re-grabs or whatever, but to the excessive degree with which Eclipse would dribble back and forth and then toss it which way you don't know which way they're going with it's hard for you to predict because that's one of those things you try to predict where they're going to toss it to in order to intercept that makes that very difficult makes it very difficult to go for steals someone comes up behind you but immediately we saw Eclipse doing exactly the same tactic back and forth instead of just the regular moving the disc around hoping you don't get it just back and forth between hands it's a good move because like somebody steals it out of your hand there's only a small window where you can't re-grab it if you're used to doing this all the time then you might actually get to re-grab it once they stole it from you it means that they have to either slap it out of your hands rather than take it and turn it around or hit it with their head Basically, send it for line wild. It doesn't guarantee you get to steal it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, guys, once again, like we've been mentioning here, we are just waiting for our Spectator client to really quickly get reset and obviously get everybody back to the server to make sure that we are good to start that matchup. And as soon as we have the Spectator client back up and running and confirm that we have that little bit of a uh, little bit of a tethering issue fixed, we will be good to start the game once again and jump into the second round. It's Eclipse currently with a 1-0 up and actually down a 1 in terms of the series score. But keep in mind, of course, that it's just one and two test of three series that are being played. And the only reason we're playing the second one is because we did see Jax take control of the initial one, and obviously because Eclipse came in from the upper bracket, so they did have the upper bracket advantage. And after all of that work, we are down to one or two rounds in order to let us know who the best in the world is. That's all we've got left, one or two rounds. It's been a long run, starting with the weekly tournaments that started, I believe, seven or eight months ago. Players have been grinding it out ever since then, had the regionals for North America way, way back in October, and the same can be said in October as well as when we had our EU regionals. Now they've been continuing to play in those online cups, continuing to earn their points, and of course, to qualify 
qualify. Then they come here, have to play through the land today, and now, of course, are here at the grand finals to play the lion's share of the prize pool. 30,000 total in Euros up for grabs here between the two of them, but first place gets to take home two-thirds of that. Man, I tell you what, that is exactly right. You know, there is a, a very difficult thing for these guys to have to deal with to figure out, you know, how are we going to handle this change in momentum? How are we going to handle these, uh, this uh, defense that's starting to fall apart on both sides, really? They have cracks in their defense that are being picked apart, and they need to figure out right now what they're going to do if they want to keep it tight and actually go for that final prize. It's a, uh, man, it is, a, it is interesting to see what they come up with as their strategies change slightly into the game. And I really hope that we get a, a nice look when this round starts, that we actually get right there at the joust and actually see who wins that joust right off the bat. We do know it's pretty much going to be Eclipse, but to get a full view of that round when everything restarts will be very fun to watch. Yeah, most definitely. We're going to have to, once again, guys, just look forward to that. This is it. This is the end of the road here. This is the end of Season 1 for the VRCL. It's all come down to this. We get to crown, finally, our champions. We already got to do it yesterday for the Unspoken. And now, today, we get to do it here for Echo Arena. The team game, the team variant we had yesterday, our individual game, Magic Spellson game in here. It's all about the team sport. Will it be a two and out? Will it go to three and go to Eclipse? Will it go to three and actually be in the momentum of Jax? Oh, man, there's so many what-ifs right now. And as everybody's spirits are calming down after that last couple of matches, and as we're letting them down, are they icing the players? Are they icing Jax? Who is going to lose the hype? Who's going to maintain hype? Lemming and I, Shiny, Palador all talk that they use hype. They manage it between each other in order to keep each other ready to go so that they can overpower the other team with energy alone. Guys, and again, we are just working to uh, get the last few players into the server based on what we just got told by production here. So it should only be just a couple more moments here before we do dive into the game. We do apologize, of course, for that little bit of a delay between the rounds, uh, first and second rounds starting, of course. But I want to make sure you guys uh, can see the action as clearly as possible. We fixed that issue with the spectator point. Also ended up giving the players, I think, a little bit more of a break because they've been grinding for some time now and they've earned that. So. As well, we left them, I think, take their headsets off for a couple minutes, too, while we were working on that issue. Man, at this point in the day, I don't know if there is enough break that really gives them what they need. But, you know, take every little bit when you can. Oh, man, this has been an exciting day and a long one indeed, man. These battles that these guys have, these double elimination rounds, people having to get knocked down to loser's bracket. Jax actually making it back up to get that rematch, winning one of their matches against Eclipse, showing that Eclipse can actually lose for once. Breaking that momentum, Eclipse actually dissecting what their defense is after their de after their defense was broken. Then they go and break uh, Jax's defense. So we're seeing a lot of things change. We're seeing new meta, I think, actually develop right before our eyes. Or people pulling out tricks that they were holding in their pocket and then now pulling it out as it looks like they might not win. Oh man, I'm excited to see what happens. Almost as excited as I am to see how the Discord blows up <laughs> after this game. Most oh. definitely. And it's a team sport, and you really make a lot of friends in this game. It's one of my favorite things about this. When we all got together at OC4, it felt almost like we were family. And I remember, like, we were all getting together. Ah, oh, it's hard to talk about without getting choked up. But just locking eyes on the players, like, this is the last day that we're going to be together. We're like, oh, it hurts so bad. And I was like, how do we get so close so fast over the beta lead in all the games leading up to OC4? And then even beyond, getting together and hanging out with the European players, already feeling like I know them and getting to hang out with them more, almost like we're family. I mean, my wife is even in love with the European players, the only ones that she's met because she didn't go to OC4. But she's like, they're great. And I was like, yeah, man, Echo Arena players are great. Our community is great. A lot of a lot of competitive communities develop somewhat a bit of a toxic uh, mentality or toxic community, but we put a lot of effort in order to push, uh, to develop a strong core of very awesome players who bring you in to try to teach you how to play the game and try to focus on sportsmanship over that, building teams over uh, what you want to do, just winning and pushing out, pulling people in. One of the people who pulls most of the people into the game would be Hasco. Sakura is another one of them. Uh, Billy is another guy. There's a lot of these names that that's what they do. They even have like a uniform, the hamburger helpers that they wear. And they see new players, they pull them into the community. Like, let me show you how to play this game. Let me show you where the Discord is. Let me introduce you to some players. Are you aware of the VR Challenger League? You can build your own team. And if you don't want to go to a straight professional match, you want to start small, we have the Discord Cup where you can get in and play in those matches, which we vary with the format. Sometimes you have 4v4, 3v3. Some people are talking 5v5, but man, the server really takes a herring when you try to do that. It does support it, but at, at lower end play, it's not a big deal. But if you want everyone spectating it, man, the server just loses it. Mm -hmm. Well, guys, again, 
for those of you that are just joining us. We want to welcome you once more to the Virtual Reality Challenger League Season 1 Grand Finals for Echo Arena. We are well, well into this match right now. There's only, in fact, a couple of rounds potentially left. Eclipse did take control of the first round of this repeated set. There's and here we go now, jumping back into it, oh, folks. Oh, Lemming wins the joust and has got a free shot. Let's see, is he going to be able to take it, though? Moving back in again. This is Affenter being tested he's here. He's waiting. Port. He's waiting. Moving in, swipping oh, it around, and this time Affenter finally taking down Lemming, maybe for the first time in this entire series so far. But oh. that's what we needed to see. That's the start we needed for Jax. Yeah, he actually tried to knock out Palador. Affenter did. It did not work out for him, and he's probably going to pull back as Lin tries to go for a backboard shot. No, tosses it back to Boo, but gets intercepted by Lemming. <laughs> They are not making it easy to say the least. Like we said before, Eclipse has the set advantage right now. They only need one more round victory, and they are going to be the champions once again. They were in this same position in the last series, however, and ended up still losing it to Jax on the complete reverse sweep. So let's see if Jax can do it for a second time, be able to steal the title away from the North Americans. Oh man, you can actually watch Lemming jerk up and down. I know that sounds awful, but that's what he does when he squats and jumps, making it very hard to catch him in three different dimensions. Oh, nice. Saved and cleared by Affenter. That was a tough rush, right? Absolutely. Affenter showing up when he's most needed to. Now, we talked about it. Now, his track record here for blocks hadn't been so good, but he's improving that tremendously here at the beginning of this round. Two straight up blocks, including one from the backboard. There it is. And there we go. It's Boop again with another triple points with black goal the coming three point out of here. Absolutely. Oh. I think a majority of his goals in this entire series have been three-pointers. I think he's got called him three-point. Boop is not the name for him anymore. He's, he's gotten three He's gotten five or six different goals, I think, throughout ah. the course of this series, and I would say a good 90% of them have been three-pointers. Yeah, yeah, man. He doesn't ding often either. It's funny that people would call him like the uh, European uh, Lemming when uh, Lemming doesn't make long shots like that. He just ends up hitting the rim, and he decided, hey, you know what? I'm just not long shotting anymore. I can get over there fast enough to just do enough two-pointers to win. Here comes the launch. Eclipse will have control at the start, obviously as we are going to see Paladur look for an opportunity to pass it forward, but at the same time, Slin and Boop move forward. They already knocked out Shiny, got him out of the running for it, and now we have to see Paladur and Lemming juggle the disc a little bit here to try and take it further upfield. Paladur finding his time. Slin, Slin is no longer second. stunned. Lemming lining it up. I Shiny getting positioned, Ooh, misses the pass. Slin as well, moving back in, sends it right back the other way, down through the tunnel. A little bit slower with more than three minutes on the clock. Ends, it, ends, ends up banking off one of the islands there, too, for a moment. Lemming is hunting you, Boop. Are you going to do it? It's a good thing that they're paying attention to Boop at the very least, because that was the issue, is just letting him On the left free. side, yeah, 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 yeah. So this time, not going to let them do it. Affentera, though, playing aggressively. This is, uh, this is a bit dangerous. They've got to be careful about that. There and no, it is. it's Boop again. <laughs> not the three-pointer, but it's enough. A two-pointer that he sinks right up in the face of the Eclipse roster. And it's a 5-0 lead, two minutes. But can they maintain this momentum? They had a 6-0 lead before they lost it earlier. They have to stay on top. They cannot let the hype die down. Keep the energy high inside the launch tubes. Hype, hype, hype. Whatever it is that gets your guys going, you need to keep that energy because while you are dead tired, while you've worked so hard to get here, you only have a little bit further to go. Absolutely. Let's see. The launch sequence starting here now. Eclipse, again, is going to be with possession to start this off. They did have a lot of trouble getting this going the last time there because of interference that was run from Jax, mainly from Slynn. So we'll see if he's going to be able to be a okay, successful broke through the defense. Not this time, Slynn. Oh, no, Slynn actually, I think, bouncing it back a little bit there. At least forcing a pass back to Palador. Palador also trying to set up, though, to get this further downfield. He's got Eye Shiny and Lemming on either side of him right now. Oh, Palador getting knocked out, Ice though. Shiny's going for the goal. Eye Shiny straight up front. They don't have anyone in the goal currently. If he can find an angle to shoot it back in, then they can score a free goal. They're playing it very conservatively, approaching the goal, trying to find a shot. They will definitely find a shot on this attack. It'll be very hard to take it from them. It's very common collectors there now. Though. Three people in the goal almost. Oh, Affentera just got knocked again, so he's going to have to be careful. Knocked for a second time in a row. He's not, you're not going to outjuke me. Oh, he did outjuke him. It doesn't matter. Slim Slim's was there. Today, yeah. Oh, and he almost passes it right back to Lemming. Affentera to save the day from that poor clear. It's going to be Affentera that throws it way downfield right now here. Slin picking it back up again, ready to try and get Ooh, aggressive and with it. Blocked successfully after he gets out the pass, too. I think the disc ended up bouncing off the bumper, however, so it doesn't end up really going far. In fact, it ends up in pretty much the exact same position. Boot moves forward, gets a nice slap off onto it. It's going to send it inside of the bubble here, very close to the goal, but Eclipse is able to clear it relatively quickly. Palador slapping it away again. All right, here comes Boop, tossing it downfield to Slen. Slen gets it, tosses it back to Affenter. 
Just all around the triangle right now here for Jaxxus. They're trying to set up another goal for themselves, and Ooh. in it goes! It's gonna be Slim this time, finally showing up with a goal of his own as he sinks the two-pointer. The seventh point now scored by Jax. Keeping that momentum, but it's another one of those games where we saw heavy possession on one side, but no scoring. Stuns are fairly even, though, and saves, though. The saves Starting on Jax, that is 15, what is keeping him from getting scored 14, on. Right, so both 13, of those so far coming off from Aventer. Really redeeming 10, himself so far in this round. It is looking really eight, good for a third round seven, right now. Six, if the third round goes into overtime, I'm going to lose it. It's going to be just insane. Two, See it right one. now. The launch coming out, and again, it's going to be Eclipse that will take control. Minute and a half left in the round here. Otherwise, Eclipse is going to have to drop it, and we will go all the way. We will go to a third round again to decide this series, to decide this tournament, and decide our Season 1 champion. Goes Slim with the long shot. Not a good one. Was that a, was that a pass to boot for the left side? I think he was just clearing it. Oh, now it's passed to himself. Going for a shot. Oh, man. Oh, no! I've seen that oh, before. Oh, my goodness. I've seen the EU do that before. I saw Virtual Reality do that, where he tosses it at the goalie. Goalie stops it, and he rushes into the goalie. He shoves it out of his hand back into the goal. I didn't think I'd see it in a world tournament play. But, man, there it is. Slim getting rough with the fight here Ooh. now. <laughs> Beautifully done by him. 15, oh, man, 14, indeed. And I, we, I talked about this at the end of the last series, too, about how Boop, in a lot of ways, was one of the only reasons why they were able to take that first one. Now the whole team is showing up. We're seeing Affinter have some great blocks at his goal. We're seeing Slynn finally contribute on his own with the goals as well. Boop is still keeping up too. This is a heroic effort from Jax, and they're only a minute away from taking this second round. The Dragon is completely awake, and they are not gonna go down without a fight. Going zero to nine. Can Lemming at least get on the board and stop the shutout? Whoa, yes, he can. That's a great shot from Lemming, but sadly, it's only the start of a comeback. Yes, and it gives possession over to Jax, and uh, if they're in their right mind, Run the time down a lot and then put it back in their own goal. Yeah, I was gonna say give the same Eclipse thing. a taste of their own medicine. The thing is, the EU is not about running down the clock. You almost will never see them do that. They're not really big about that. They like to play. And uh, it's really funny. It's one of the complaints they have when they see American sports where people will actually just stall to run the clock down. They're like, no, play, man, play. The launch coming back out, like we mentioned before, for the first time in this round. Jax is gonna have possession at the start of the volley. Here out they go, go. Maffinter picking it up. Ooh, and he's gonna have Lemming moving in. Didn't get the brakes off this time either, so Lemming gets the quick bounce, sending it back the other direction. The disc oh. does end up immediately inside of the bubble. Slynn almost able to intercept it and go for a quick goal. He got punched out though, that's gonna hold him back, and he's not able to catch up with the pass quickly enough. So it goes over through Lemming to Palador, over to the other side. It's an open goal right now, 30 seconds left to oh, try he misses and score the grab. Oh, it's not gonna be good. Ice Shiny's gonna be able to swoop in, try to send it in. Nope, it goes off the bumper, not gonna work out for them. Slynn trying to send it back here, but it will end up in the hands of Eclipse's players first. And Affinter is is in goal, so it's not as dangerous as Aishani approaches Palador, who's the one who knocks out the goal. He just got knocked out himself, but he's approaching the goal to get ready for what he's used to doing. Avatar's trying to move to stay out of the way, and he avoids Palador's attack and kicks it out with less than eight seconds to go. Another great block from Avatar, and it has saved them in this round. They're already pretty much guaranteed for it, but there you go. The timer's going to expire. Jax will take round number two, and we will go the distance indeed, all the way to round three in the repeated set to decide if Eclipse will be able to take this, or Jax can steal the title away and oh. become the season one champions. Oh my God, can you feel the pressure right now? Man, the pressure inside those headsets, inside that room. That room has got to be electric. I hope somebody's pulled out their phone from the other teams to actually see how it feels, because this has got to be insane as long as this game could possibly run. Do they end up tying it up? Do they even go into overtime? I don't know. I don't think it'll go that way. It is looking like Jax has momentum, but I am wrong often. We do not know which way it's going to go, like we said. But we always know, as we've been told, Jax do not perform well in the first round. Second round's where the comeback happens. Can we get a repeat of the previous match where Jax takes it again? Does Eclipse actually pull it together? Was Eclipse merely sandbagging for show? We never know until we see it play out. Let's find out. Seven seconds until the joust comes in. So far, it's been very back and forth between who's been controlling this initial joust between Jax and Eclipse. Out they go. The launch speed's looking good. They're both going to hit at the same exact time. However, it is going to be Jax that wins it and shoots it way over. Also, Slynn had an open goal, just wasn't able to get possession because it was going wildly. Boop picks it up, has the pass to Slynn, but no, we'll go back to give Affinterra a little bit more of an angle to try and send back this over to Boop. Slynn. Slynn is up on top, waiting for the pass to be sent to him, but there's also Ooh. two guys in the goal. No! Boop just tries to go right for the goal on his own. Doesn't even use Slynn, even though he has him. Oh, Slynn they got a pass in the arena. No! One's no. This is going to leave it wide open for Eclipse to descend it back inside. That could be Free a three-pointer, too. And there it is. I shine Ooh. scoring the first goal for Eclipse. Breaking the momentum, making them pay for being too aggressive. There, they put themselves on top at the beginning. 
only 30 seconds into the final, final match. This one is where it comes down to who is going to be the first place winner, the World Finals, the Grand Finals for VR Challenger League, and we're only 30 seconds into the match. Right now, possession is going to switch over to Jax. Jax, can they get a hold? Can they hold on to it? Will Lemming rush them dead on? And will Aventera slam on the brakes as he gets rid of the disc? Keep your eyes open for that play. The launch is out. Aventera with first contact. Lemming Doesn't almost immediately on, on him, as we are used to. Ice Shiny, though, has intercepted it. So that takes the control back over into Eclipse's hands. Lemming now with control of it, too. Aventera, great block timing to knock Palador out temporarily here. But Ice Shiny also going to be in a little bit of trouble himself. He's working his way up. See Slynn trying to remain in this fight, but Eclipse has done a great job of containing Slynn so far in this third round. Man, those both these teams really do love their backwards pass laterals. They love to like, you know, find themselves a new position if they get too far forward and they can't get where they need to. I Shani setting up. Moving Passing forward up here. to Lemming in position. Paladin's gonna knock out the goalie. Uh, but no. the disc is wild. Lemming was not able to hold on to control of it. They're still going to be able to take it for right now. That's the luck there, it for back sure. And forth. We can see Boop trying to move back in here, but Paladur... Goalie's out, goalie's no, out! he's going to swing it right in, and that's going to be Ice Shiny coming in with a goal. Two-pointer this time, but still it's enough to continue to secure that lead. A minute and a half into the round so far, but right now it's Eclipse dominating it with a 5-0 scoreline. Woo, man. Got a little bit, a little bit under four minutes left to go, and already Eclipse has the momentum. Back, we got Jax, who's gonna get the disc again. Can they stop Lemming? This is what you're supposed to do. When Lemming rushes you right in your face, you get rid of the disc and slam on your brakes so he gets nothing from you. Both of the goals so far as well have been a team effort with Eye Shiny actually scoring them, but Lemming assisting on both of them as well. So Eclipse is doing a good job of keeping the team cohesion in the game. Lemming as well, also keeping the pressure on constantly off of these launch jousts. That Jax has to try and do. Oh, bad pass. That is definitely going to cost him a second as Man, they try to go for it, but mess. they keep control. They knock him out. Boops get knocked out, too. Is the goal open? No, we see Aventura sitting in it. Can He's Aventura waiting for defend it, though. He's going to move back in, and no, Ice Shiny takes him down again. Another assist coming in, too. Some more team were coming out. This is not what we needed to see from Jax. They're crumbling at the seams right now, and Eclipse is shutting them down. There's still three minutes to go as well after that massive play that we had from Jax in round two, to see it go seven and zero this early, that is definitely heartbreaking if you are Jax and if you love that team. Still though, gotta be getting tons of respect. The next round, ready to launch here in a second. Let's see if we have the ability for Jax to get back into this. They'll have possession off the launch once again. Out they go. We expect Lemming to launch across the arena and immediately put the pressure, and there you go. And he also got the punch off, He too. knocks yep. him out every time. That's what I said. You got to slam your brakes to protect your head. Don't let Lemming have anything. Slynn holding back. Palador trying to swing it back around here, playing on the defensive. Boop, not able to steal it. They've done a great job as well. Eclipse this is. They've done a great job of locking up that left side of the arena where Boop had previously been sneaking in to get all these three-pointers off. He hasn't been so successful with it and hasn't been successful at all in this third round. So with, oh, with 07 on the clock. These guys are probably going to run and bleed as much time off the clock they can. You can see a shiny doing exactly that. Yeah. It's going to be holding back, trying to waste it down, passing it between themselves. As long as they're not pressured, they're not really going to feel compelled to take this up the field anymore. Finally, Ooh. they'll start to. They do have Boop to worry about. But, oh, Aventera coming back in, though, slams it away, and we can't immediately see Lemming pursue it just yet. But also, where is Slynn at? He's supposed to be picking this up right now, and he's nowhere to be seen. Yep, man. Time is running out as these guys just run the clock down. This is not looking good at all for Jax, but it's looking absolutely great for Eclipse. They're going back into that dominant form, the form where we thought they were going to be able to straight up just 2-0 this matchup from the beginning and take a shutdown victory to claim themselves as the Season 1 champions. And they may be going back to that form here in the final round in order to claim that title. Yep, they're going to end this match with a little bit of keep away. If you want to stop keep away, you have to go man on man. That's literally your only way that you can stop it when it goes like this. Just stay on top of them and don't allow them to have anyone left to throw it to. Hi, Shiny going back in, going to try to score another goal here. That's going to put Jax on the defensive here. As now we have Lemming moving in, trying to go for the slam dunk a little bit too. Wrapping around it, stolen away at the last second by Boop, however, but it didn't stay that way. He had to slap it away. Slynn picks it up. He goes for the clear, and that's a great clear. Way over into the two point zone for Eclipse. Now, who's going to get there first? Slynn makes it, but the disc bounces to the left side. Boop's to pick it up instead he slams it in Gets and that's a three-pointer three with only a minute and a half though that was a lot of time spent fighting over it look at that team possession time that was all just running down the clock they really want that money and that title and they're willing to do anything to get it a few more of those and jacks may just be able to fight their way back into this game but time is running short and not only that but they've now lost the possession too that is indeed. They do not have quite the point lead they need anymore to, to depend on that trick where they just score an own goal after running the clock down.
They don't have nearly as much of an advantage in order to play off of that. But still, we've got Jackson's two-man offensive team. It's going to be Boop and Slynn moving up, trying to force the pass. They do, but sadly, they're not able to stop it. So it goes over towards Ice Shiny. It's going to go back and forth between him and Lemming a little bit. And Palador is still getting involved in this, too. They were able to punch out Boop a couple seconds ago, but he's just going to fall back. The entirety of the team is going to try to play defensive, but that's exactly what Eclipse wants, because now they can continue to run down the timer. They can break that momentum. They can make you more tired. They can make you run back and forth while they just kind of sit in one position while getting all the energy they need, all the makeup, and bleeding that clock dry. Absolutely, it's gonna help to kind of preserve their energy here a little bit, as I'm sure these guys are trying to expend as much as possible. Jax, this is 50 seconds remaining in the season, ladies and gentlemen here. We are going to crown a champion within these next few moments, and if, fortunately, for the European fans out there, it's looking like Jax may have just lost their steam. Eclipse, well in the lead, 40 seconds left. I Shiny moving in for another goal as well, and he is able to beat out Affinterra once again to secure a ninth point for themselves as Eclipse continue to open the gap even more. 37 seconds left, Jax will get possession, but they need two three-pointers in a row now within the next 37 seconds, and that's only to take it to OT. Yeah, man, right now they're making a big case for adding a shot clock to the game. <laughs> Look at that possession time. That is unreal. That is definitely running down the clock as much as you can, doing whatever you can to get that win. Let's see, like we said, there's a lot of money on the line, and Eclipse are about to claim it. 35 seconds remaining here, guys. Jax getting that possession first off. Boop's gonna take it in his hands, moving forward. Punched out originally, but no, it looks like Boop managed to get possession back. He's gonna continue to push forward all on his own. Tries oh. to go for the goal, and it's off the backboard. It's another two-pointer. They only used 10 seconds to do that as well. But they're not gonna get possession this next time yeah. around, and you know Eclipse is just gonna run that clock down. They're not gonna make a play for the goal. They're gonna take those 23 seconds as long as they can, and they'll get all 23 of them, I would think. Well, we will see exactly what Jax's plan is. They have to think quickly here. They have to come up with a plan to steal this possession away and somehow try to get another three-pointer onto the board in these next 20 seconds. Otherwise, Eclipse will become the season one champion, and they're gonna take home the lion's share of the prize pool. Out they go, let's see, the launch from Eclipse. It's gonna give it over to Palador, not trying to send it up field originally, but Jax definitely sending their players in. The disco's loose, almost into the hands of Lemming actually there, but no, it's sent Come away. On. Oh my goodness, oh, that almost goes God. in. 10 seconds remaining, let's see, they can't get possession back originally, and it's gone. That's it, ladies and gentlemen, there's no way they're getting it back. Eclipse are going to be your season one champions for Echo Arena here at the VRCL, congratulations. And they made them work for it, indeed. They are happy. They are dropping controllers and headsets, but they can't believe it. But they definitely worked for it. But if anything else, you know that they've got a lot of respect for Jax because they definitely tried their hardest and came very, very close. Came back in with dominant form, secured a 7-0 lead at the start of the Breath final of round. My shiny. <laughs> secured a 7-0 lead at the start of the round, and then switched that passive play style. We're able to easily waste about two minutes, I would say, off of the five-minute total clock to bring it down. But it's there's the love, there is the respect. That is what I'm talking about. After after months and months of disrespect, there it is. You see that Jax are a real force to be reckoned with. And it just came down to a little bit of changes there at the end. And Jax, of course, are still gonna be rewarded for their efforts. They're gonna be taking home the second place prize pool, right around 10,000 euros. But for our first place team, for Eclipse, they get 20,000 euros, the trophy, and the championship title of the first global champions here for Echo Arena, and the season one champions for the VR Challenger League. Now here's an interesting question. Boop likes to pose upside down with the trophy, but I don't think either one of his teammates have any energy left to hold him upside down. <laughs> so are they actually going to try that or are they gonna get some help from the sidelines? We'll find out in just a second, <laughs> of course, as we are gonna have Falcon ready for that interview. And we'll work to get those guys over to the interview area so we can, of course, get their thoughts on the situation that's currently unfolding before them. They've just became a whole lot richer and I'm sure they're gonna wanna celebrate that. Oh, they're gonna be beaming from ear to ear tonight, man. And notice these guys got early flights, so hopefully they don't tie one on too hard being an <laughs> <laughs> I know Palador has worked incredibly hard for this, changing a lot of stuff about his life in order to push for this one. I know he's very happy about this win. And so is Lemming and iShiny. iShiny, a professional player in his own right in a different game, jumping in this one and helping his team to win. And Lemming assembling this team, jumping in from the very beginning, the very first day, the very first minute of the beta launch, and never letting up until this moment. So there you have it once again. It's been an amazing season. It's been a long season at that. Like we said, it started seven or eight months ago now with these players participating in online tournament
Cups in order to earn points to qualify for the regional tournaments. Made it through there in the case of both of the players that made it to the Grand Finals. Continued to play in those online Cups and then came here to the Grand Finals where we can see the bracket one more time and see exactly how both these players played it out. Eclipse and Jax both dominated their way through the upper bracket. Jax taking down Lamplighters and Fangasms along the way while Eclipse took down Team Gravity and the Kangorillas. When they met though, it was a dominant upper bracket win for Eclipse, sending Jax back down to the lower bracket. They made quick work of the Kangorillas, however, and then of course we had the epic grand final matchup here at the end of the day. Oh man, it went the full bore all the way through. Eclipse losing the first the first match of their life and then going another three rounds for the final. They took it all the way, if you can believe it. They worked so hard to get here. It came down to one three-pointer, not enough time left on the clock. Definitely making a case for adding a shot clock though, right? <laughs> Definitely just a little bit there. Well, guys, again, there you have it. There you have the final bracket for the VRCL Echo Arena Championship. And we have our winner claimed. The long season has finally come to a close here in Katowice. And in just a few moments, we're going to be handing over that trophy to the well-deserved victors. And there's a lot of new up-and-coming players, a lot of people just learning the game, but getting quick, getting uh, really good at it very quick. A lot of people, young, athletic, high energy, but also very good gamer types jumping in. People taking uh, people from other sports and saying, hey, how well does it translate here? So we are setting up for a lot more interesting stuff come season two, when all the points reset and everyone has to start from ground zero in order to work their way up. All right, guys, well, let's take a look one more time at the prize pool, just to get the exact amounts that these guys are going to be taking home. Like we said, first place, 20,000 euros, a little bit of an extra 100 on there as well. And for our second place team, that being Jax, they're going to be taking home 10,200 euros to split between the three of them. Yes, and this is in addition to what they already got for regional, so these guys are definitely working hard to get there. I know one of the players is actually telling me that to his wife when he had to go downstairs and, uh, in the basement where he has his VR set up, he said, uh, he's like, sorry, honey, I have to go work. <laughs> And work he did, of course, and they'll be well rewarded for that. It's going to be a very, very nice split amongst those three players. That's just under about 7K euros for each of those guys to take home first place. So once again, congratulations to them. That's a very, very decent take home. And of course, being crowned as a global grand champion is not a bad thing either. You know, interesting fact about Lemming, his uh, girlfriend actually lives some distance away from him, so he spends half his time there and half his time wherever mm. he, where he lives. And he bought her a rift, mostly with the purpose to be able to continually <laughs> so he can train practice. while he's down there. Oh, yeah, so he doesn't let up the whole time he's there. That's how dedicated he is to playing this, and his dedication shows. Just like whenever he played with iShiny and, and convinced iShiny, that's like, I know you like this thing, but how about you just keep playing this game for real and get really good at it? I saw iShiny jump in the beta. I saw iShiny in a Ready at Dawn launch game. I saw him grow up from noob, very terrible, to you know, really just running up the stuns. And then all of a sudden, he was showing off his juking skills. And I was like, you have surpassed what most of the players are doing. You've been playing with Lemming too much, haven't you? And then they announced yeah. the teams, and then he comes in. And they have led them right to this. They actually got that win. They're going to be so excited to get that win. I know Jax might be a little bit bummed, but I feel like that 10,200 to make him feel a little bit better about it. And knowing that they came that close and that they can actually defeat Eclipse. They have beaten them in one of the matches, so Eclipse will never be able to live that down, that it does happen. You can lose to uh, Eclipse. It did ha you can lose to Jax. I mean, originally they were discussing the uh, double elimination. They, uh, they weren't, I mean, whether, uh, weren't deciding whether or not they were going to have that second set of rounds, so it could have easily gone that way. But that is it for me. I am Pooh Nanners. And I am Blue, guys. It's been a great season. We want to thank you all for sticking with us throughout the last couple of months. We'll be bringing you the action from Oculus Connect 4, from DreamHack, or excuse me, from ESL1 Hamburg, from DreamHack Winter, and of course, from IEM Oakland as well. And of course, here at the Grand Finals. Thank you guys so much for sticking with us. We're going to send it back down to the stage for an interview with our winners and to congratulate them and reward them with the trophy. Oh my goodness, Eclipse, you did it! You guys did it! Oh my goodness, yes, give them a round of applause. You guys are the pioneers at the VR Challenger League champions. This has been an incredible journey for you guys from beginning to end. Lemmings, I know your voice is out, but let's hear it. Let's hear some thoughts. I, I feel incredible. These guys, these, there's no one, there's no one on this fucking on this planet that I want to be with in these guys. It's incredible. This, this is, this, I, no words. I got no voice. I have no words. Um, so coming into this, I know Jax was really giving you a run for the money. They were playing hard. You know, any thoughts into how you guys came up on that last matchup? Uh, first, I just want to say, holy crap. <laughs> They're worthy opponents. Okay, they were so good. All, all the matches tonight were great, fantastic. So many three-rounders. 
they gave us the fight of our lives, and now we'll be first place forever. Or at least for season one. <laughs> now, uh, also just want to say too, real quick, uh, for real, between all the trash talk and some of the controversy, at the end of the day, I think we're all friends here. We all know we're here for one thing, and that is Echo Arena, and that is to push VR and eSports forward and VR sports forward and be the pioneers going into the future. And I think I speak for all of us when I say the Echo Arena community is a huge family, and we're hoping that we'll all be back again uh, one year from now, back in Katowice. You know, you came from different games, you came together, you believed in this team. You're here now at the end, the winners of Katowice, grand champions. Any emotions going through your head? Anything you want to say to your fans out there? Um, <laughs> uh, I mean, obviously the time zone differences are pretty rough and I had a handful of players from my past games and other teams and family and a lot of supporters that stayed up until now through the night it's almost 9 10 a.m over on the pacific coast of the united states and um thank you guys so much for all the support uh couldn't say it any better to be honest well now let me introduce you to rue he is here with ready at dawn he has your trophy rue do you want to have some words uh, well, actually not much. These guys basically deserve to speak more than we do. So on behalf of ESL, Oculus, Intel, and Ready at Dawn, congratulations, guys. And now your VR Challenger 2018 Grand Champions for Echo Arena Season 1, Eclipse! All right, guys, and it was an incredible matchup. Thank you so much for watching and everyone to support this VR gaming, Oculus Intel ESL gaming. Good night.